If you're anything like me, you are absolutely utterly exhausted at looking at the random BS new feature that somebody has put in to a Wi-Fi router to sell to people on Amazon. It looks like a spider or it has RGB. No, this is a Wi-Fi router that doesn't have bullshit. It just has things that, you know, a Wi-Fi router should have. And uh, GLI Net sponsored us to check this out. This is their Flint 2. And just, just look at this. We've got Wi-Fi 6, we've got fast Wi-Fi. We have two 2.5 gigabit ports, rather than, you know, a lot of the ones you see online where it's like, oh, it's got 2.5 gig. Oh yeah, it's just the WAN. So if you have 2.5 gig connection, you want a hardware computer, too bad, buy something else. This one, they at least included two. It's got multi-WAN support. It runs OpenWRT. Just an operating system that's open source, it just works, and best of all, VPN, and not just some lame VPN. You can run a WireGuard server, a, a private VPN for yourself, so you can connect to your devices at home anywhere in the world, or you know, stream your internet connection through your home connection securely at 900 megabit, almost a gigabit off of a $200 Wi-Fi router, which is pretty freaking sick. I like these, these are like the convertible power bricks. We can kick it onto here. Does it come with the other ones? Hey, it does, so you could travel with this. Look at that. Oh, cute. I didn't actually realize that this has redundant hardwired WAN, which is super cool. So we'll see in a few minutes here, but I imagine you can probably use this as like a catch the Wi-Fi and repeat it. You can also use a hardwired WAN. You could use two hardwired WANs. You could probably connect cellular to this thing. There's a USB port to tether your phone too. And those two hardwired WAN ports are both the 2.5 gig. And you can see right there, you can switch it between WAN and LAN like I mentioned before. So you could use this to pass a faster than one gig internet connection to a, a device or a switch or something like that. They've also got four more one gig ethernet ports. So you can use this uh, for most of your devices like a switch, 12 volt DC jack, USB 3 port on the side. Oh, look, it's got the little um, keyhole mounts. So you can mount this on the wall or to something metal with the LTT cable management product. We have a little thing that goes in the keyhole. No. Stick it in there, tighten the thing. That one on, magnetic. You ready for this? Can we see it? <laughs> this front one. Go. Bam, cable managed. It's kind of awesome. You can have like your PC right there and just like mount it to the back of the PC or to the PC case. Magnets. Let's, uh, let's do some Wi-Fi stuff. Wow, look at all these. See, I was right. Multi-WAN, we've got Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, repeater, and tethering. All right, let's connect it to the Wi-Fi too, why not, right? Let's set up a multi-WAN here, why not? Oh, right here, repeater options. Oh, beautiful, that's easy. Band selection five, apply, connect. Oh, you can even lock it to a, a specific access point if you have multiple access points or set a static IP on this, which is nice. We've now got the ethernet connection that's coming into it and the office Wi-Fi going to this and then it's beaming internet back to me. So if I were to go into this and say, yo dog, it's failover right now. Load balance, use multiple interfaces to increase the total bandwidth. Whoa, let's disconnect unplugged and we're still vibing. Obviously the pain's gonna be a lot worse on Wi-Fi, but unconnected, disconnect. See, imagine you're on like a cruise ship or something. Hey, and there we go. Bam, now we have two internet connections again. And it's so easy. Like that did not take any fancy hacker man setup. I just literally connected to the Wi-Fi network. But that's only two. How about three connections? Hmm, it's two, iOS. Boom, three connections now. All right, let's unplug that. Boom, we're now going through the cellular on my phone over USB. Aside from that, it can do all of the other normal things that routers do. You can play around with your IPs, either in an advanced or easy way. You can set up a firewall, you can open ports, you can have a guest network. You can do DNS over HTTPS or TLS. You can change the network, but yeah, you can actually run this thing just as an access point. If you already have a router, you can totally do that. There's IPv6 support, you can change the MAC addresses. You can do pretty much anything you could do with any other router, plus they have the cool VPN stuff. And not just you can run a VPN server on these, which like I said before, is a really strong suit. So say you're from the States and you have like bomb Netflix, but you are you happen to be overseas somewhere and they have crap Netflix. Well, connect to your home network and watch whatever Netflix you would watch like you were at home. You can also connect to zero tier or tail scale natively, which is super nice. Tail scale and zero tier, if you're not familiar, are peer to peer VPN solutions that are really awesome. But let's try the WireGuard server. Generate config, start. Okay, well that was easy. Profiles, add a profile. We'll call this Jake's laptop. 
Ah, it even, it prompts you to use dynamic DNS because if your IP address were to change externally, uh, you wouldn't be able to access this router, right? But it will, let's say, enable dynamic DNS and it gives us, okay, sick. You don't even have to like set up a service. They just have their own dynamic DNS service. That's awesome. It's been set up. I have WireGuard running on my laptop. I've got my laptop connected to our 10 gigabit internet. And this router is connected to a separate one gig connection that we have for testing things out. Let's see how fast the WireGuard connection is. Oh, let's go! 880, look at that, boys and girls. Wow, magic. Naturally, if you were to use OpenVPN, it would be a lot slower since OpenVPN is single-threaded, but WireGuard freaking rips. And the reason it can do that is due to the hardware acceleration on here. It is a quad-core media tech chip, so it's nothing like the it's super insane. It's, it's only a $200 router, but the hardware acceleration is what makes this able to go so fast. They even have ad blocking on here. Not that I would recommend that because that does pay for me to feed my children. My, my child is a cat, but still. They got DNS over HTTPS. They got AdGuard Home. They got WPA3 support for security. They also have built-in parental controls with Bark that does require a subscription to use that. Other than that, man, it just, it just Wi-Fi's. It Wi-Fi's good. It routes good. It does a VPN good. It's not that expensive. Um, you could also, if you're like a traveler, big travel person, you could host your own VPN on this thing and then get one of their cute little travel routers like the Slate AX or the Barrel AX. Um, and then you can run these as a VPN client. You know what, screw it, let me show you how that works. The provider is the Flint 2 router. Boom, apply. We now have our little baby Slate AX travel router running as a VPN client for the VPN server that's running on the Flint 2. Let's see how fast that goes. Damn, look at that. Okay, that's pretty ridiculous. This is literally faster. I don't know how, but it's faster. Little guy can run WireGuard client at gig down 500 up. That's pretty good. I mean, you're probably not gonna find a one gig connection while you're traveling, but if you did, it can handle it. It's so little, look how cute it is. <laughs> Last but not least, let's try the Wi-Fi. Set to 160 wide. This is still Wi-Fi 6, not Wi-Fi 6E. So we shouldn't expect like above gigabit speeds per se, but we should still be able to get some pretty fast Wi-Fi out of this thing. This is a relatively congested environment, so I wouldn't expect anything like much crazier than this. Yeah, it's about 600 both ways. Overall, pretty stout little router. I mean, it can do really fast VPN. It can do real fast Wi-Fi. It has two 2.5 gig ports. And for $189, I mean, if I had to pick this or a gaming router, I think the choice is pretty obvious. Again, thanks to GLINF for sponsoring the video. Uh, if you guys like what you saw here, you can check it out at the link down below. We'll also have their travel routers linked down there. Those things are pretty sick. Get subscribed, like the video, and if you want more content, why don't you check out the video I did on the Barrel AX, which is one of their little travel routers. That thing is pretty sick.